But what's unique about Finneytown is that I just feel like we're family. We're all very, very close. Yeah, as a first year teacher, this has definitely exceeded my expectations. And just like how to assess situations the right way. We are ranked in the top 10 of diversity as far as students uh, population here in the state of Ohio. I would say Finneytown is a really unique place. It has always felt like we're a big family, but it even feels more like that now. We decided to do this because in society, there's nothing healthy about escalation. And student escalation leads to suspensions. And suspension leads to kids not learning. And kids not learning leads to impatience, and impatience leads to violence. So let's change that. I would say school culture has had a lot of challenges in the last five years, especially the last couple of years with COVID. Um, I think a lot of our families are going through some job losses or grief experiences, and that's really affecting our kids and our families. I'm really seeing that if something happens in the family, it's certainly going to affect the child and how they are able to cope at school. I would describe what's happened in Finneytown schools over the last five years um, as exciting. We are trying to push against the status quo, what traditional public schools look like. So we've really focused on bringing restorative practices, responsive classroom, project-based learning to our students. I actually went kicking and screaming. I did not want to go to another training. And, and in hindsight, I look back and it was, it's changed my life forever. I would characterize what we've been doing here uh, the last five years in the district as intentional, um, meaningful, and slow. I think it's about making our community better, solving the problems and the issues that we have between students and teachers and everyone, and just making it a better place. Several people brought their heads together, and I wasn't in the initial group of that, and said, we really want to shift our culture here. They saw it going wayward and said, we've got to start caring for one another more. So they came up with the house system, and then we got the buy-in of the entire staff. I think with the house system that we've implemented, the house system gives us a chance to uh, have students interact with one another who not necessarily would interact, you know, from different grade levels. So with the house system itself, it gives also students a chance to talk with teachers they normally would not probably have. I have students that I don't even have in class that I know in the hallway that I greet by name. I know what's going on in their lives. This is something like very positive that our school is doing. And I think it impacts the culture of our school as well. It's bringing uh, these friend groups that we have here at Finneytown to like become more together and uh, it's really expressing our diversity here. The point of the house was to build relationships so it goes hand in hand with restorative practices. And so house started and then that team went and heard about restorative practices and then we started implementing it. And it just is, it's, it goes, it's seamless. It, it's perfect together. And then the pep rally and stuff for the house system, then we got these house games at the end of the year. And I feel like it brought everybody closer, so bringing that to Finneytown definitely changed it. I know that the district sent a team of five administrators to the original restorative practices training. And something must have happened so powerful in that training that they said, we're dedicated to this. Um, we were able to gather as an entire district at the beginning of um, the school year um, about three years ago. And we got to learn about that together, which was very powerful. Three simple elements. One is care for a room. So all these classrooms, you know, they set up in traditional classroom. Well, we change that around. We take the desks 
And if there are chairs and tables, we'll move the tables out of the way and we'll circle the chairs up. And, um, and then the second thing, after we rearrange the architecture of the room, we, um, we focus on the present. So, you know, in that moment, we'll do different things to help people settle into their seats and be present. And then we'll have what's called conversations that matter. And these conversations are based on questions and powerful questions that engage people in conversations. Oh my goodness. Why would she, why would she say that? Miss Nate, can I talk to you? Oh sure, Robbie, and what's up? It's nice seeing you today. Two of my friends are having conflict and I'm afraid it's going to escalate. Wow, thanks for letting me know. Um, who are the two students? Selena and Star. Okay, I'll make sure I get with them and we'll pull them in for a conversation. Thanks, Rabia. Hey, Malik. Hey, Malik. I was wondering, I just had a student report that we have two girls they were having a conflict. Would you be willing to hold that conversation with them? Yeah, that's cool. Thanks. Who are the two? It's Selena and Star. Okay, yeah, I got you. Okay, thanks, Malik. Hey, what's going on, guys? Uh, first off, thank you for agreeing to meet. Uh, I know it's not that easy right now, but uh, just for real quick, uh, we're gonna talk one at a time, you know, just to make sure that we have things rolling smoothly. But real quick, we're gonna start with you. Uh, tell me what happened. Well, I heard from a friend that in a group chat, she called me a liar and a thief. How'd that make you feel? It made me mad, cause you're my friend. Why would you even say that? Why is it that you called her a liar and a thief? Well, two months ago, while we were going to a basketball game, I let her borrow my shirt and I never got it back. It was raining, I fell, and I tried to wash it, but it's stained. Well, I at least want my shirt back, even if it's stained. All right, real quick, so you fell and it stained her shirt? Mm -hmm. You said it was raining? Mm -hmm. It's like a mud stain? I don't really know, it's just like a brown stain, so probably. It's like really hard to get out. Yeah. I tried washing it three times, it doesn't come off. Um. How's that make you feel? Hmm? Well, a little upset because I just want my shirt. It was a good shirt. Even if it's staying? Yeah. Well, now I have to ruin the surprise, but your birthday's in two weeks. I was planning to buy you a new shirt. What do you think we could do now to get this saluted? I'm sorry for calling you a thief. I didn't know you were gonna buy me a new shirt. I'm sorry for staining your shirt. All right, that's a good way to conclude things, guys. Um, you guys think it's safe to Move forward with the situation. You know, you get a new shirt. So. Yeah. <laughs> Restorative practice to me is simply being able to have a crucial conversation. That student may not be ready to have a conversation yet. So, but the best thing that we can do is say, okay, you need to either go here, take a breath. Can you go in the hallway, take a breath, and we can talk for a minute. Or, you know, just, again, de-escalating that student. My job as a um, restorative practice um, teacher is you know, I'm hearing both sides of the story. I'm mediating the conversation rather than giving advice or telling them what to do. Um, better than carrots and sticks, I think it was called. And that was our first introduction even to this other option of restorative practices. And when we read about it and learned that it was about building community and relationships um, and then about consequences over punishments, We understand the techniques that are being used to help our kids actually learn different behaviors instead of just punishing kids, sending kids home from school, um, getting kids involved with the court system. Seeing the priority of communication and community relationship-based education has made a big impact. Even though after I learned about restorative practice, I was like, kind of do that anyone. I think anyone who's an effective quality teacher or leader does restorative practice. They may just not know what they're doing. Treating each other with empathy and grace when we do make mistakes because we are human. You have some that have embraced restorative practices and then you have some that feel like it's, it's, not a, it's a waste of their time. But those that have embraced it, you can see a change because they build better connections with students. I 
And in the time I've been here, we've had different resource officers. And you can tell a difference in who has the training and who had not had the training. My, my instinct is obviously to de-escalate the situation and get the students separated and um, away from each other so that each one can de-escalate before we bring them back together to have the restorative conversation because we don't want them to actually still be upset in trying to have a conversation when neither of them are ready to have. We wanted um, our resource officer to go through the restorative practice onboarding that all new hires go through. And then we wanted her to be a part of our restorative practice room, as well as with the administrators and ongoing conversation and learning about that. And it has shifted for us dramatically because we were ready not to continue that partnership. Having the restorative practices, it gives them a chance to practice what they need in real life when they become adults. Uh, the peer mediation process is new this year and it actually started mid-year with, um, with an off-campus training for peer mediators. And then the folks, uh, the teachers who are currently leading in the restorative practices room, the RP room that we have here on campus, those are the ones who are also supervising and mentoring the peer mediator. I'm beginning to understand my teachers because of, of our training. It just taught us a lot. I think peer mediation is awesome because their peers can see them mediating and doing restorative practice, which can help other students not feel like it's just adults doing it. We recently had a case where a student was referred but took advantage of the diversionary court process and through that process really learned a lot more about his behavior and how it affected other people and that student actually ended up deciding to become a peer facilitator. Restorative practices have changed the way we interact with each other as the adults um, because we recognize the value in building community with each other. So there's never a time that we sit down to meet that we don't check in first. I feel that there's just a very strong camaraderie amongst all of us and I feel that we each trust each other. So what I've seen um, is, is there's just such a great example at the top um, that we get to live and feed off of every single day. A big part of restorative practices is the circle, uh, the power of the circle. And so who's in the circle and who's there is who's supposed to be there. So it's kind of, I like to start all of my classes with these circles and I'm involved in that. I am not the teacher on the outside listening to students. I'm involved in the circle. I have seen many teachers using circles uh, within their classrooms. What that does is it allows equity in the classroom. It allows everybody to be seen, everybody to be heard, and the respect to be complete in the classroom. We don't really do circle time. We just, if I have a problem, I usually go in the seat. I have had numerous circles where there may have been conflicts with students, and it could be student to student, student to teacher, um, student to admin, I'm, or even parent to parent. And we bring the parents in, and it's been such a positive experience. Um, we have circles whenever we feel like we need to convene as a learning community um, so that everyone can have their voice heard. Um, and that's really powerful um, in addressing a situation. One of my teachers, it was a problem that had happened in the classroom, so she had a circle because of the problem that had happened the day before. Uh, you can go into classrooms and see circles either beginning the class, ending the class. A lot of classrooms have even set up their classroom to be in a circle. I'm a science classroom, so you don't normally see a circle with a science classroom, but for students to be able to see each other, see everyone uh, in the whole class, not rows or desks, I thought was really important.
Okay. Well, after hearing everything, uh, you're going to be suspended, and I'm going to call your father and let him know what happened. That you'll be suspended for a period of time, and then part of the suspension agreement is that when you return, you and Nolan will have a restorative conversation with me, and then assuming that goes well, if you're both willing, we'll then go to the classroom where the two of you fought, and we'll have a restorative circle with that class and the teacher. Okay. Fine. Okay. Well, I'm gonna call your dad, let him know, and um, I need you to sign this while I'm calling. Hi, I'm calling. Unfortunately, we had a situation occur today where Dakota and another student got into a fight in class. Yeah, both students are okay. Dakota's fine, the other student's fine. Um, but Dakota will be suspended. Dakota, Nolan, first I just wanna say thank you for being here today. All right, I know you've been out for a few days, uh, suspended, but um, it's important that we have this conversation, okay? Yeah. And so here's how it's gonna go. I'm gonna, I'm gonna ask all the questions, um, be a few of them. We're gonna take turns, uh, one at a time, um, and use me first language, don't point fingers, and we're not here to figure out who's right and who's wrong or who the winner and loser was. We're here to figure out what happened from each other's perspectives and to decide together how we're gonna move forward to make things right between the two of you and with your classmates and teacher, okay? What about from your perspective, Nolan, what happened? So from my perspective, I was working on my project and then um, he came over and started messing with me. Um, I was already having a bad day, it wasn't going well, just a downhill slope. And then um, I was getting tired of it, so I, I kind of escalated it by hitting his hand away and it just went up from there. Okay, and what was going through your mind? Um, Nothing really, I was just angry because I was already having a bad day, it wasn't going well. So the two of you have been impacted, right? Right. Suspended, I have to do some makeup work. Who else has been impacted by what happened? Um, probably our groups, because they were like right, sitting right there when mm -hmm. it first started happening. Right. Um, and, then it, and then obviously like the class, because we, we started fighting, we interrupted everything they were doing. Nolan, I'm sorry I shouldn't have started screwing around in the first place. We wouldn't be here if I hadn't done that, so I'm sorry. I'm sorry for pushing it too far. Um, really shouldn't have done that. Well, I appreciate that, guys. Um, an altercation took place a few days ago between Nolan and Dakota. And they're here today, rather courageously, to sit in front of you and with you to talk about what happened and make things right moving forward. The next thing we're going to do is, since we're welcoming uh, Nolan and Dakota back into the classroom, is we're going to share something that we find um, a strength of theirs to be. Uh, I can go ahead and start. Uh, Chambers. Yeah, so first, Dakota, I think one thing uh, as the teacher that I see is you always lead. You always step up um, and lead other students, whatever activity we're doing. And as a teacher, it's super helpful to have a student who's ready to jump in, take charge, help others, help me. Uh, and so your leadership is a huge strength. And Nolan, uh, I think your willingness to try anything is a huge strength. Think of last year uh, when you joined the wrestling team. You'd never done it before, but you were like, sure, let me just dive in. Let's just go for it. If you do want to speak, uh, I would ask that you share how seeing the two of them uh, get into that altercation made you feel when it was happening, and then what you need from Nolan and Dakota to make things right moving forward. I was confused because I felt like y'all were friends and I didn't really know what was like going on. I agree with Anthony, like it kind of set me back on my work. So yeah, I hope y'all can figure it out. You guys started fighting suddenly, so I was a little, lost and I couldn't ask the teacher for any help because I had a question so I, I couldn't ask because you guys were fighting. I hope I didn't hurt anybody and I hope the actions that took place didn't impact you guys as much as it might have. I just hope that we can kind of build your guys' trust in us again because I know we kind of probably have damaged that a little bit. 
So, just a second chance is all I'm asking for. Thanks, Dakota. From a mom's perspective, I appreciate so much the fact that it's really trying to prepare our kids for future conflicts, for future, um, you know, opportunities to build community or deal with conflict. And so I, I feel good about it. I feel like we're really building the skills not only for our students, but in some ways also helping our parents see a different way to have meaningful conversations with their children. And so I think that's been very powerful change happens from the heart and so people have to truly believe in um, that which uh, they're doing from a day-to-day -day basis. We're embracing vulnerability, we're denouncing shaming, and we're trying to create a deep, honest, soulful belief that a student can achieve. So we have the data, we have the reports, we have the first-hand accounts of students coming and being like, man, like these restorative practices work. We are able, I'm able to see how my actions not only affect me, but others. Restorative practices for me changes the experience and it makes the experience more human, uh, no matter the situation. And I think in the end, uh, restorative practices confronts people with their freedom. When I talk to the community, I would tell them that their financial investment in Finneytown Local Schools goes directly into our students through this training, through these resources that we're offering for our staff and our students together.